Hey friends! I'm hanging out today at the Mr. Checkout office and I wanted to talk to you about what it means for a product to be retail ready. And that's kind of an interesting concept because a lot of times we make a product and we're like, cool, we have gone through R&D, we've gone through research and development, we've gone through testing, we've asked all our friends and family, we've even gotten some outsiders to give us their opinions on the product. Of course it's ready for retail, right? Well, wait a minute, not so fast, not necessarily. Not every product is ready for retail. So what does it mean for a product to be retail ready? The quickest, easiest example I can give you is labels, right? Um, you want your labels to be centered. <laughs> you want the edges to match up. Ideally, they're put on by a machine so that you've automated the process. You're not sitting at the table labeling every single product, especially if you're shipping out pallets of product. It's just not a good use of your time. Maybe, uh, maybe if someone else did it, but it's probably just not the best use of your time, right? So, um, there's more to it though than that. The other day, I want to give you an example. The other day I bought a, a little widget and it had a label on it and I went to go read the instructions on how to use the widget, but you know what? The labels weren't in English. And unfortunately for me, I only read in English. I can speak a little bit of French and I can speak a little bit of Spanish, but I only read in English. And these were actually um, not written in English, French, or Spanish. So I was really out of luck. I was really up a creek without a paddle. I was like, I don't know how to use this. I have no idea. And I'm fairly smart and pretty intuitive when it comes to stuff, but I had no idea. I really had no idea. I mean, fortunately, I was also able to Google. Um, so I was figuring out how to use my widget. Well, it would have been a lot easier for me if I was able to just look at the widget and say, oh, here's the instructions, and voila, I would have known. So, you know, you want to make sure that your label has the instructions on it in the language that the people who are purchasing it actually use. So you want to make sure your labels are straight. You want to make sure that the language is understandable. And then you want to make sure also that there aren't any typos. I bought a birthday present for my mom yesterday, two days ago, it came in the mail. It just came in the mail the other day. And it's really cool. It's this, it's actually not that cool. It's, <laughs> but I think that she'll have fun with it. I think she'll have fun with it. So bear with me while I tell you about it. It's this little inflatable uh, unicorn horn, actually, that you wear on your head. It has a little crown and it has a horn and then it has little rings so you put the ring toss you toss the rings onto the unicorn horn and it's a little ring toss game and you can you know bob your head and try to catch them and, and it's cute and it's fun and i have two little kids who i think are going to get a kick out of playing it with her and i think she's going to love playing it with them so it all makes sense right it's going to be a great gift she's going to love it um my point in telling you this is that it came in the cutest little box right and i'm like this is great now, it's okay that it came in this box because it was mailed to me from overseas. I get it. English isn't their first language. Typos happen. Even if they used a spell checker, I mean, it probably wouldn't have caught this because it didn't check the grammar. It checked, it checked the spelling. And technically, the spelling on the box is correct. However, the grammar on the box is not correct. So had this box actually been ready for retail if they wanted to sell this adorable little unicorn inflatable ring toss set in a store, they would have had a really hard time because no distributor wants to take something on that's not retail ready. And no retailer, either big box or independent, wants to take something on that's not retail ready. So what happened on this box was it said, have the beat day. And that could have been really cool had it been um, earbuds, right? Had it been for something that related to having a beat, like listening with music, or had it been a musical instrument, maybe a little xylophone or a little drum set, that would have been fine, right? Because it would have been a play on words. Have a beat day, yo. That, but it wasn't at all, not at all. It should have said, have the best day, not have the beat day. Oh, it was such a letdown, but it's still such a cute box that I am, in fact, giving it to her in the box. And it's fine, but it's not retail ready. So, um, 
you know, when you make your boxes, when you make your labels, when you prepare your product for retail, that's the other thing you want to look for, is you want to make sure that what you're putting out there is not only in the correct language, but that it also makes sense in that language. If you're not a native speaker of that language, find someone who is that can check it for you. You don't even need to look very far. You can use a site like Upwork or Fiverr or TaskRabbit to find someone who is a native language, a native speaker or a reader or writer of that language, someone who has been educated in that language, to just go through and proofread your writing. It's that simple, right? If it's not retail ready, they won't put it on their shelves. Now, what else does retail ready mean? It means that you wanna actually go to the retail stores where you want your products to see where it's gonna fit on the shelf and check out the footprint that it's going to be. Or if it's gonna be on an end rack, say how much space is this gonna take, right? Make sure that it's gonna fit. Make sure it fits in with their other products. In an upcoming video, we are going to show you some products that are awesome. <laughs> I'll give you some examples of products that are super retail ready. And then I'll give you some that look like they're retail ready, but that with a couple tweaks, they'd be there. They're just not quite there yet. And you need a really highly trained eye to see why. And then I'll show you a few where it's just, yikes, what were they thinking? Now I'm not gonna call out any companies. I'm not gonna show you the company name. I don't wanna make fun of anybody. We're gonna use these videos as a learning tool. So check out our, our other videos. Uh, leave us links, leave us comments below. If you wanna show us a video, or excuse me, an image of what you're doing, please, absolutely. I would love to see what you're doing. Put that in the comments below as well. Let's get back to retail ready. What else does retail ready mean? What does it mean to you? Have you been to the retailer? Have you talked to your um, ideal retailer to see what they're looking for? Do you know what they want? That's a very good question, right? Do you know how much space you're going to have? What shape or footprint size your product should uh, take up? It's all very important, right? If you're making a product that is only an inch by an inch big, but it's in a three by three inch box, right? That's gonna make a difference to the retailer because you're taking up that much rack space. It's very, um, it's very um, minute sometimes. The details are so important though. So I really encourage you, stick with me here. Check out our next upcoming videos about what it means to be retail ready. It's more than the labels. It's more than the packaging size. In fact, it's more than the packaging itself. It comes down to the product. It really does. And in some ways it may be, you have the very best product, but no one's ever heard of you, <laughs> right? You just have no brand. So are you really retail ready? Is your product actually going to sell in a retail environment if no one's ever heard of you? Why would someone buy your product if they could buy someone else's product? For example, for example, let's say that you come out with a new hand sanitizer. You're not cheaper than Purell, an extremely well-known brand, right? And you're not better known than Purell. Why would anybody buy you, right? If someone could buy Purell, which has um, credibility to the name, it's extremely well-known, it's got a great reputation, and if it's less expensive than your product, why would somebody buy your product? Think about it. So you need a brand behind your product. So you've got your packaging, you've got your product, you've got your brand, and then also, of course, your actual product. Is it something that people want? If it's not something that people want, I mean, it could be the coolest product in the world, but if it's not something that people want, is it really retail ready? Do retailers want it? If I were a retailer with a thousand square foot space in my retail store, if I had a small C store, I wanna maximize that space with things, with products that are going to move, right? Products that people want to buy. I don't want to put something there that people aren't buying. I want to put something there that people are buying and so I can refill that space. So make sure that your product matters. Make sure that your product has a brand. So therefore you want to have your marketing in place. Okay, what are you doing for marketing? What's your brand? What's your image? What are your images? Um, and make sure that your labels are correct. I know I've harped on labels a lot. I just see so many labels 
and it, <laughs> it frosts my cookie and it grinds my gears when I see the labels that are just like slightly off and I'm like, oh, come on. I just picture the person sitting at the kitchen table putting on the label and it's just one after another after another and it's such a tedious process. And I know it is, I've done this before, but you need to have your labels and it can't just be a sticker on a paper bag, right? It actually needs to be a real label. Putting a sticker on a jar is not making your jar retail ready. Okay, you need to have a UPC code. You need to have your ingredients if you're having a food item. You need to have your nutrition facts if you're having your food item. If you're not, if you're having um, health and beauty, right? You wanna have your description. Whatever it is, you need to have the necessary information. I can't stress this enough. This is the number one reason that, um, that I reject products. When someone comes to me and says, hey, can you help me get my product into a store? If I look at it and it doesn't have that appeal, that immediate appeal, and I look at it and I say, wow, this label is just terrible, <laughs> right? That is the number one reason. It's made a bad first impression. And that's why I harp on labels so heavily, is that that's the first impression for your customer. The label tells your brand, the label communicates the product, the label communicates the need in some cases, and the label tells your story. If it's not doing those things, your label is failing you. And if your label can't be understood, or if the label is um, perhaps misleading with its language, or if the, um, if the words are in the incorrect order or the incorrect word itself, right? It shows that it's, it may be a great product, but it shows that the label, you didn't take enough time to make the right label, right? And that reflects poorly on the quality of the product, which makes consumers think twice about buying it, which means sales are going to be lower than they would otherwise, and that's a bad thing. And that's why I harp on labels. Labels are your products, your company's first impression to the consumers, and they need to be perfect. And that's one step to being retail ready. And if your label isn't there, forget it. You can have the best product, you can have a great brand, and if you have an off label, or excuse me, a label that's off rather, forget it, it's kaput. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say, rework your label and come back to me, <laughs> right? You wanna show me your labels? I would love to see your labels. Drop a link in the comment below to a site with your label, an image. I would love to go check it out. I will tell you what I think. Thumbs up, thumbs down. And, um, and then, of course, if you want a longer consultation, I'm happy to talk with you about it. But, you know, I would love to see it. And I, I don't mean to, like, like, sound snobby or anything about it. I just get so passionate about this because I see so many awesome products with so much great potential that they just they can't get their foot in the door. They literally get stuck because of their label. Isn't that silly? They just get stuck because their label doesn't cut it. The label doesn't cut it. The label is just no good. So the label must be good. It's gotta be there, right? Spelling matters, grammar matters, word order matters. Word order is different in different languages. You gotta make sure it's correct for the language that your consumer uses, right? Make sure it's correct for the country that you're selling into. Um, make sure you have the required information. It's an actual label. It's not just a quick sticker that you printed off put on and sent out. It needs to be professional. And there you have it. That is the beginning of our retail readiness talk. I'll go into this more in detail um, and I'll show you some examples. Like I said, check out some of our other videos. We have examples coming up of products that are super retail ready. They look awesome, they're doing great, and they're crushing it because they're so retail ready and they've been crushing it from the beginning because they look good, right? They catch the consumer's eye. They have that kind of shelf appeal, right? That's what I call it. Like when you pull up to a new house that you're looking at, maybe buying or renting, you're like, ooh, that's nice, right? It's got that curb appeal. Well, the product on the shelf, it has that shelf appeal. So the product's got that shelf appeal. You like it, you look at it, looks good. Let me try it, let me buy it, right? Well, you want your product to do the same thing. 
So we're going to talk more about uh, retail readiness in that respect, and I'm going to give you some examples of products that are great. I'm also going to give you products that are really on the edge. They might be there, but just a few little tweaks, and then they'll be there, and then some products where they really, really miss the mark, and how they could get there, right? We'll use it as a learning tool. So check out some of our other videos, leave me your comments below, let me know what you think. If you've had success, or if you've had failures that then you've learned from and you've fixed them, I want to hear about that too. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day and uh, talk to me about your retail readiness story.